So I'm going to start this out by listing some common art rules that I've been told and let me know in the comments if you have also heard them. Don't paint with pure black. Brushes don't matter at all. Don't trace. Be consistent with your art style. Use very fast strokes, confident strokes. Vary your pen pressure and of course, learn the rules before you break them. Now, I'm sure if you've watched my videos before, you know that this sounds pretty similar to my video on art taboos, which you should also check out if you haven't already. Link in the description and in the card above. But I wanted to aim this video more towards the rules that are pretty that aren't really contested, that most people do agree with and are legitimately helpful in your artistic applications. Not so much the ones that most people kind of see as just limitations and don't really have specific, you know, help with your artwork, like the nudity topic that I focused on in the video. Unfortunately, though, there's still a problem with these art rules. You see, these rules are really just a simplified kind of guide or list of tips that experienced artists give to less experienced artists. This is often done, especially when artists ask other artists for help, for tips, how do you do this? Or when artists simply discover something and they want to help other people kind of get to the same conclusion without suffering as much as they have. And I've definitely been on both parts of on both sides of this, um, and I'm always jumping from one to the other, giving advice as well as asking and learning from other artists myself. The thing is though, every winding path or mistake or juncture that you take on your art journey has really contributed to the artists that you end up being today. Um, and that happens with every artist, no matter what stage they're in, every single thing that they've done has contributed to it. We often tend to see things as like, oh, OK, I messed around or I made this many mistakes. And if I had just done this, this and this, I would have been here faster. But that's really not true. Looking back over the past three and a half years of when I've really taken my art seriously, I've made a lot of progress and I've done a lot of work in the last eight months now. But I have to admit with where I'm at now, I can see really, really good things and important things that I've learned in those first three years that even though I didn't make too much progress, I learned a lot about myself. And with the experience and understanding that I have now, I'm able to see things in that work that I've done that tell me about who I really, truly am and what I want to explore with my artwork that I wouldn't have been able to if I didn't make work for that long. So when you start to focus on these rules throughout your entire art journey, it starts to really reduce your chance to have that experience that I was talking about just now, because at the end of the day, art is really subjective. It doesn't really matter which rules you adhere to as long as you make something that you like and then eventually other people like, right? I mean, the best artists are usually those who like just work diligently in the corner, in a dark room somewhere, in the nature, who knows? And they work for years on end in private. Nobody knows about them, but eventually people do eventually know about them. And the artist is usually not even aware of how big their following or their audience is. And they just make stuff. They're like, oh, great. You like it. And then they go back to making more. And that's usually how it tends to be. And oftentimes you can find some artists out there who's very successful breaking every single rule that we all have known to come. And I don't want to say love, but we just obey them so <laughs> diligently without asking any questions. You can find someone who's breaking every single one and they're doing really well for themselves. So if you're not careful, these rules can kind of continuously backseat your art subconsciously and really, really heavily limit what you can do and your own self exploration and rob you of that joy that you really need to be successful in art or even to just enjoy it. And honestly, that can be the only success you need. That personal discovery, that journey is, is really important as well, because we that's exactly how we're eventually going to stand out if we ever want to. And if we never spend time to find that for ourselves, then we're probably never going to find a really good, healthy way to stand out. We'll just try to be a little bit different from somebody else and eventually fail because you can never be a better version of somebody else. You can only be you. 
Now, before I get into like how to solve this issue, because um, I actually think there's a there's a pretty easy way to deal with it. Um, I want to tell you quickly about what I'm painting in this video. So I'm using Procreate on my 2020 12.9 inch iPad Pro sitting in the Sketchboard Pro and I'm that is sitting on the Cintiq. So I'm basically using my Cintiq as an easel. I'm also using the second gen Apple Pencil with a grip called Plus Ergo Grip. Um, I didn't make it, but I learned about it from a video from Laura Price where she talks about her uh, favorite digital art uh, tools that she has. And I pretty much bought everything in that video because it was super useful. But unfortunately, this little grip thing is super expensive at 25 bucks. But for me, it's worth it. Honestly, I feel like I can hold on to my Apple Pencil for days on end with this thing. Sounds that sounded like a lot of praise. Uh, this isn't sponsored by the, the grip, but I will say that I am. The channel is sponsored by Paperlike, which actually is not on my iPad at the moment because there was a spec on it that I wanted to get rid of for this video. And there was still something on the screen. It's impossible when you film in 4K to get it perfect. But yeah, that's a paper like honestly makes my video or my painting and sketching process super, super nice to do because it just feels amazing. It's better than my Cintiq. If you were to ask me, which a lot of people ask me, what's the best thing, Josh? And there's really no best thing, but if I had to choose one, I would always choose my iPad because it feels the best. The latency is super low um, and I can take it wherever I wanna go. So back onto the, the topic at hand, I also want to say that I'm not blaming anyone. You know, I'm not trying to sit here and complain about, oh, this is this issue that's happened. And, you know, uh, woe is me, first world problems. And I'm not trying to say that, oh, these, these other artists that are better than me led me astray and we need to do what we want. Like, no, um, I think this is a new natural problem that has occurred because we are in an age of infinitely accessible information and infinite amount of information from everyone um, about what they're doing. And I'm definitely contributing to that. And just to talk about myself as an example, I used to uh, limit myself to a lot of rules too. So um, hopefully this makes it easier to understand. Every stroke for me, I thought had to be fast. I thought every stroke had to be clean and bold and confident. You always hear that from other artists telling you to do that, right? And I'm sure I've said it again, reiterating, but I took it in such a literal way to where whatever shape I wanted to draw, it was a series of extremely fast lines that made the sketch dead or the line art just dead. It looked, there was no human error to it. And eventually I started to notice, hmm, the way my favorite artists draw when they're drawing with pen or pencil, they're pretty slow and there's this intimate vibe about it. And I realized that is the component that makes it look so good. I also thought I needed to learn, this was recently, I told myself, all right, I need to learn to draw without an undersketch because I keep trying to do line art and it looks terrible. But that isn't necessarily true. I made that up myself and you can draw without doing an undersketch. There's plenty of I mean, you can draw with an undersketch. There's plenty of great artists who do that. James Jean has amazingly clean paintings, but if you look at his drawings, they're incredibly messy. I just, I just limited myself so much to trying so, so hard. And that leads into my next thing because I thought, okay, well, I need to be able to visualize everything I wanna draw on the paper. And so I would try these exercises to try so hard to memorize exactly how to do something. And I would just, I wouldn't say it's wasted time because again, that's allowed me to do a lot of things and provide a lot of insight to you guys um, that you'll be able to see, especially coming up soon. But I realized it's okay. I don't have to do that. And the one of the most recent things is I kept thinking that I have to keep doing this method uh, because, or use this brush set because I told everyone it was great and I'm selling this brush and I did this three months ago and I have to do it for the rest of my career because then I would just be misleading people. And that of course doesn't make sense because I should be allowed to grow just like everyone else. And if I decide that, hey, I actually like these brushes more that can help me more and i'm good to go from there and brushes that is something that people always always say brushes don't matter right you can you should be able to do anything with any brush and there is some truth to that like i said with these art rules i don't think it's like my taboo video where they're usually just completely a waste of time to focus and pay attention to there is some credit to that but i really believe that the the advice that your brushes don't matter 
is strictly for beginners who are trying to learn a fundamental. You should be learning your fundamentals and when you're learning those fundamentals, your brushes don't matter. But when you begin to discover yourself and who you really want to be and the type of art you want to make, the brushes that you use are going to factor into that. You get really, really intimate and close with the tool that you choose. Um, and just, just look at uh, Kim Jong-gi, for example. Like, There's a reason he uses a certain tool all the time. It's not because it's the best tool. It's not because it's amazing and it's going to make your work work perfectly or look great. It's just that's what he's used to using. And if you use something for years on end, it's probably going to be incredibly good for you. And that's just how things end up working. I'm sure there's plenty of artists out there who have used a specific brand of a physical tool. And when that brand slightly changes, it's like really frustrating for them. So you'll find a lot of people, gamers, whatever type of community, whatever specific keyboard or something that they've used for years, they'll just go ahead and buy tons of it because they don't want to have to worry about adapting to something else. And so, yeah, you can do anything with one brush, but when you get more experienced and you know what you want to make and you start dabbling in what you want to do and you want to explore something that you've just naturally done on your own, the brush can help. And that's not even to mention speed and making things easier and getting into a pipeline and workflow just for your own sake. There's easily brushes that you're going to find are best for you. And I want you to keep that in mind and not necessarily think that, oh, OK, I can go back to just picking whatever brush. No, still, you know, when you're learning your fundamentals, try not to worry about the brush and also realize that the brush is going to matter because of what you do with it and how long you use it. So I want to quickly go back to what I was saying when I was talking about myself and the things that I would limit myself to do. I also want to share how I was able to let go and do the opposite. So first off, now I allow myself to be messy. You might be able to notice in some of the sketches that I've been sharing lately that they're a lot less clean and refined, but I love this kind of crisp, fiery nature that I'm seeing in my sketches when I'm calm and patient, but I still allow myself to be messy to discover things. And now I'm looking at artists like Eliza Ivanova. I think she'd probably be at the top of my list for art. Uh, people who influence my art right now, I'd also say Again, I, I I was super inspired by Kushinov, Ilya Kushinov, and then I just kind of didn't look at his stuff. And then I realized, well, yeah, there's still a lot of stuff that I still really like. And then now I'm looking at um, Nurishan Bekaliev as well. So those three are really the people I'm trying to focus on the most. Um, and I'll talk about why I'm really limiting myself. Um, but yeah, when I look at Elisa's stuff, I think the, the appeal to her stuff that I like, um, especially after learning about her reading in her tutorial book, is it's just an evolution, a natural evolution through a lot of experience. It's not a special technique. You can't you can't get the same result by just doing everything she does. She's done it for so long that it's evolved to just work perfectly for her. And that's what I find really appealing. And I want to see if I could discover something like that myself with my messy sketches. Eventually, you know, her stuff is still pretty clean, but maybe I'll find some level of cleanliness with my stuff. And I find that even within a day's worth of sketches, some of them turn out being pretty clean. I also allow myself to use new brushes. I'm actually experimenting with some new brushes right now. I can't wait to share them with you guys. Um, it's, it's really interesting. I have no idea how to like brand them, but I'm sure I'll figure out something. Um, and I also have just let me let myself change my style based off of my evolving aesthetic. The, the, I really have a strong opinion now after attending the Wacom career days uh, about this idea of aesthetic versus style now. I really want to expand on that. Uh, the first speaker, I can't remember his name, but he was he's a German retoucher. When I heard that phrase that he said, like aesthetic versus style, I was like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, that's another video. But I also let myself be rigid and architectural and as logical as I feel like with my work, which I was always pushing against because I thought that that's not artsy enough. That's not creative. That's not how you do stuff. You have to be free and flowy and just completely loose. But I, I kind of found a way to combine both of those. So when I see something, I allow myself to kind of simplify it and make it something that I can understand and express in a fun way that makes sense to me. And that's kind of something I learned from Sanguine. If you have been to my stream just last night, you'll see that I'm, I'm trying to get better with my values right now um, because I, I really enjoy those. And somebody thought I was doing algebra 
on stream because I was literally writing down the brightness levels of the where I wanted to group my shadow and light values on the upper left hand corner of the screen and I was using minuses and um, parentheses <laughs> and I realized it looked so insane but it was helpful to me to kind of limit myself that way and the result really speaks for itself if you've seen my other work. So I have a solution on how to navigate this journey. Um, again, just to reiterate, it's I think that in this day and age, we have a lot of accessibility to information and so much more information from everyone. And so it's caused us to kind of lose track of how to discover things for ourselves. And I want to explain a process where you can discover things for yourself and take advantage of this great time where we have an ability to learn from so many different people. So first, I recommend that you go back to your first love with art. A lot of people tell me that they lose their joy with art, they hate it. And I want you to go back to when, what did you make when you really had fun with art? What would you do now? What can you do that would just be super fun for you? That doesn't rely on your style or being great, right? And if you can't figure that out, then that's kind of a whole nother issue. Because I think that either you have gotten into this with the completely wrong mindset of like just a way to make money or you think that art can only be valuable if it's extremely highly proficient which those are some issues that you need to sort out for yourself but if you can find whatever you really love doing go back to that and look at it hopefully you have some work that you've done and try to understand like what you love about it and just spend time creating more of that enjoy it and then when you're doing that try to push it try to do something even better or do something that you haven't done before. So let's say you loved the first thing you ever did. You saw a Ghibli movie and you were just amazed with the landscape and you just painted, let's say the tree, like something that was really iconic to you in that scene. You just painted that. Maybe you push further and you try to paint everything in that scene. Maybe you loved the characters and you loved the animation and the fluidity of the movement but you only like drew and sketched the one moment that looked the coolest. Maybe you try to do some different keyframes of the movement there. And then this is where you get to the best part. Then you start to realize, okay, what do I really like? What do I struggle with? And what do I find myself doing subconsciously, right? So you can really like some stuff, which is what we already talked about, but you can also struggle with some things and struggle with how to express it. Or you can find yourself, huh, I do this all the time and it's subconscious. I just naturally make this kind of stroke or I naturally am drawn to these things. And so kind of list all those things and evaluate what you wanna keep doing and evaluate what you kind of wanna fix and evaluate the struggles that you run into when you try to push yourself. And then look for artists that do the same thing. Look for older, more experienced artists who are doing that thing that you can't really figure out that you need to be able to do what you want, right? So to break this part down, this is why I think um, a lot of artists get discouraged looking at better artwork because they don't have a kind of core drive to it. It's really tough when you're looking at all of this amazing artwork out there. And I've done this thing myself so much, but I found this is how all those crazy people who say looking at other artwork makes them happy and feel like getting excited to do more work, right? Raise your hand if you're the, you're the person who's like, what the hell are you talking about? This stuff makes me sad. <laughs> what do you, what's, how, do you, how are you happy? But now I, I see it, the, the way to get to be at that level is to know yourself enough to know what you like to do to the point where eventually when you're looking at other artwork you find that artist who has figured out or expressed that thing that you love that you're trying to figure out how to do so maybe you find this animator who just that just captures that same exact spark that you had from that studio ghibli film that made you want to work on the character movement and you find that animator and you're like, they're doing it exactly the same style. I, I love their style. That's exactly how I'd want to do it. And then you find that out and then you just immerse yourself in their work and you study them and then you start to work on, OK, what is the difference? What do they have that I don't have? And that's another big skill you have to develop across this journey. And then when you find that, then you go back and you say, oh, OK, they understand anatomy. I don't understand anatomy. Then you go back to the fundamentals, then you get those rules back, then you learn those rules, stick to those rules, let somebody teach you, understand those fundamentals. Then you can go back 
and it isn't like a you know this is a very messy thing you always are going back and forth with this process you're learning then you go back to working on the stuff that you love to do your own explorations your own experiments and then you learn and then you bring it back and it's a really really beautiful experience where you're developing yourself based off of your own kind of curriculum you're just developing your own sense of style from learning from what others um, have to share but you're very being very specific about who you learn from you're being specific about who inspires you this is not a tough thing but it's a th i mean this is a kind of a tough thing but you can get really really good at it and the more you learn about yourself and the more you understand what you like the quicker you're going to be able to find those artists that really really rhyme with you it's going to feel like you find artists that are bigger more adult versions of you imagine like the movie inside out where you have like four or five different personalities in your in yourself in your own artwork you're going to find artists that kind of adhere to those and then the better you get the more you're going to realize oh this artist isn't really that it's this one and then you're going to realize oh this artist i used to kind of gloss over wow that they really were capturing exactly what i was looking for and i need to look at their work and i've done that too there's artists who i kind of looked over and didn't really pay attention to and then i'm like wow they're this is exactly what i'm trying to do and then you go back and you just really study them. And so you kind of have like these four or five different slots in yourself where you have these artists that you're looking at to kind of guide you on how to figure out how to tease out these things that you want to share with your work. And then you kind of just eventually keep replacing them and then you get closer and closer versions of people to look at. So that's why I really believe you shouldn't be looking at too many artists at once, you know, to learn your to improve and develop your style but you should be really trying to learn more about yourself and think okay now i really understand that anger or sadness component of me not necessarily those emotions i'm just going off of the inside out film um analogy and like oh i really understand the anger and this artist really shows that and then you look at their work you learn what they have that you don't have and then you go study those fundamentals and then while you're doing that you you kind of play with it you have fun and then you're just growing and then you start growing really fast and then you start standing out and it's great and i think that's really the natural process that we should have in this day and age where we are able to again continue to be intimate and understand who we are and what we want to do with our work we rinse and repeat and then we come back and study and it's that again really really fun dynamic process that makes the art journey fun and not so daunting and deadly and feel like there's a hill that you have to cross it's just a constant journey it's not this place where you kind of snap i guess there is always a place where you just finally get it and it clicks but that isn't at the end it's more at the beginning of your journey um i want you to see it that way the beginning of your journey is when that kind of clicks for you it's not the end it's not the middle it's not when you suddenly become rich it's really the beginning and i think there's more than one click i think it's clicked for me three and a half years ago i think it clicked for me uh i think uh, eight months ago or so and i think it clicked for me again recently so it's it's weird it, you kind of get these kind of boosts where you understand uh much more holistically where you stand and what you need to do to improve and then you're just like okay you see this huge field of time that you have to cross in order to get to that next click and it starts to get clearer and clearer as you move forward so yeah this is my video on you know breaking the rules please go break those rules don't listen to any of them just do what you want draw anime waifus if that's what you want to do you know no shame <laughs> And uh, I will see you in the next one. Keep drawing, stay positive, and stay safe. Peace.